Well, uh, we'd like to thank both of you for coming this morning. <laughs> Uh, what, tell me what you want to know, because we can fill you in on, on just about anything. Uh, the shows that we wrote, uh, the shows that we wrote and you never saw, um, uh, some of the behind the scenes uh, shenanigans that were going on. Um, I'm sure you'll be hearing a lot of that today too. But uh, any questions at all, we're just, we're just here to, uh, to fill you guys in. So, okay, well, let us tell you when we came on board the show. Um, we came on board the show um, the first week in October. The series had been on for about two weeks. And um, we got a phone call one day, and they said to us, uh, we're looking for potential story editors. Would you, would you consider working? And we said, oh, oh no, 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 not at all. Because um, we, we had heard uh, about the show. We had seen the show. We knew it was, it was a very hot show to be associated with. Um, Don Belisario called us in, and he said, uh, what we would like to do is we would like to, uh, to try you out on, on some material. Uh, we have this story here. It was called The Warrior. Um, the Warrior became the, li the living legend. Uh, the story was written by Ken Pettis, and they gave us this uh, the story, and they said, tonight go home and write Act One. So we left the office, we wrote Act One, we turned it in the next morning. And uh, they said, this is great. Now go home and write Act Two tonight. So we wrote Act Two tonight. We turned it in, they said, this is great, you're hired. Well, we didn't, they said, but there's good news and there's bad news. The, the good news is that you're hired. The bad news is that we're taking these two acts and we're throwing them in the wastebasket because Glenn wants to write a two-parter. He wants to, because we were writing a one-part episode. They wanted to do Patton in space, basically. So we're giving you fire in space, but Glenn is going to write this two-parter. Um, a couple of interesting things about that particular script. In the original story, um, Commander Kane, his original name of, in the story was Abel Duncan. So Abel to Kane. Uh, we didn't know at that particular we, time. We associated it with the donuts, actually. <laughs> We didn't know that uh, Glenn was going the, the semi-religious name route. We caught on, uh, ultimately. Uh, so we changed the character's name to Jebedar, and then it became Cain. Um, in the story, uh, the woman's name, was uh, Sheba, was Alethea. Um, those are pretty much the only two things that were different, although in our version, um, at that point, uh, Annie Lockhart hadn't been signed on the show, and although the story said uh, Sheba, uh, Alethea, should be the daughter of uh, the commander. They told us, don't make her the daughter because we may want to use this character as a running character. So we wrote her as no relation at all to this guy, just, but just a, a very good uh, uh, co-commander fighter, whatever. Uh, we wrote her very, very strong, too. Um, I know that she, she flew rings around uh, Starbuck, and uh, we had a lot of fun with that. Um, so from that story to, the, uh, to our version, to what Glenn did, there were some little changes. I never ceased to be amazed at Terry's memory. All I remember was getting our first check. <laughs> <laughs> so really, he's, he's, he's the memory half of the team. We, we have sat in... Uh, story meetings, not only in Galactica, but other shows that we've worked on, and someone will say, well, uh, you know where the daughter has the argument with the mother, and we had written it the day before, and I'm going, where is it, where is it, where is it, and Terry says, page 24, near the bottom, <laughs> so I, I depend on him for all this, he just reminded me a lot of stuff that I, I had forgotten about, I just assume forget about it again. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions yet? <laughs> yeah, sure. It's real convenient having that microphone way over there. <laughs> yeah. I recently read an article in Sue Paxton's fanzine Anomaly and with Terrence McDonald. One of the questions I would just like to ask is, what are the, some of the storylines that you would have liked to write for me, possibly the second season, that you didn't have an opportunity to do? Um, I know that there were two scripts that were ready to go. Um, 
If you watch the evolution of the show, um, anybody with half a brain knows that after about the second week when we heard from ABC that the Cylons couldn't kill anybody, they were no threat. You know, so why even bother having them around? Um, in fact, when we wrote our scripts, and we wrote even in stage direction, um, the, uh, Starbuck blows the Cylon to kingdom come. We couldn't write that even in the stage direction because that, that, uh, that meant in ABC's uh, deranged thinking that we were killing something. Um, how can you, something be going to kingdom come unless it's alive? I was like, okay. Um, we had a lot of fun with standing. Oh, ooh. Um, there was a script that we wrote um, called Two for Twilly. And uh, I believe the network had come to us and uh, had come to us and said, we would like to do a version of Captain's Paradise. Now, Captain's Paradise is an old 1950-52 Alec Guinness movie um, where there's a sea captain who is married to two different women in two different ports. So when he goes to the one port, he's living here, and then he goes out on his voyages, and then he comes into port and he's here. So we took that, and uh, we had this character named Twilly, who was a... Uh, he, he was the fix-it man. We decided one of the things that we really wanted to do was concentrate on internal shows. Who else is on this fleet? You know, because it was always somebody coming in. Well, who else is here? We thought that that would be interesting. And what are these other ships like? You know, because it just wasn't the Galactica. Um, so he's the fix-it man. And what he does is he go, he, he's, he's stationed on the Galactica, but every once in a while he has to go out to the aggro ship. Of course, he's married out on the aggro ship, and he's also married on the Galactica. But nobody knows that at the time until uh, Starbuck and Apollo have to go out. They want some R&R, &R, and they're going out to the aggro ship to sneak into the lake and do some fishing. And the woman who he's married to is being transferred to the aggro ship because they're having trouble uh, growing food, and she does hydroponics. So she's going to be the assistant, of course, it turns out to be the other wife. Okay. When Twilly finds this out, he is crazed. And, and Starbuck and Apollo have tried to keep the two of them apart. And Ap Apollo doesn't want any part of this. And Starbuck is, yeah, we got to keep them apart. So uh, ultimately, uh, what happens is um, they are in, uh, in the area of a huge megastar. And what they're going to do, the whole fleet is going to use it with a slingshot effect. They're going to use the gravity to shoot off and get away from the Cylons. Um, when the women find out that uh, Twilly is married to them both, one of them takes a pot shot at him and blows up this, uh, the gyro, basically. And the entire aggro ship starts listing. And they hit the thrusters and balance the thing out, but it's so delicately balanced that nothing can land. And they're being drawn into the megastar because they can't get away from it. So it's like, okay, well now what's going to happen? Twilly is too, he's too crazed to even deal with the situation because he's got two fighting females around him. And Starbuck and Apollo are in the middle of it. Um, ultimately, uh, uh, Sheba and the Boomer take off in a, in a shuttlecraft and come over. And they're going to land, and then it's discovered, no, you can't land. Um, Starbuck and Apollo are working with Twilly to try and uh, to repair this thing. And uh, at the last minute, it's all repaired. But at the same time, Boomer and Sheba are using the shuttlecraft to push um, the aggro ship away from the megastar. So it all works out. And it was fun. It was a lot of fun. And we even got to the point, by the way, where we had uh, the people coming in to read for uh, the parts. Um, I remember that one of the wives was being read for by Amy Stryker. Don't, don't tell them the other one. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Amy Stryker was, um, if anybody's seen Robert Altman's film, A Wedding, she was the bride. And she would have been the mouseier of the two wives. Then we were looking for another woman who was the stronger of the two women and the one who takes a pot shot at Twilly. And the person who read for that was? Well, first of all, as she read, that she was one of the last of the uh, contract players at Universal, which meant that she was on contract with the studio or whatever, uh, whatever they wanted to put her in. And they asked us to have her read at this audition, which we did. 
and she got the giggles. And uh, we thought it was very unprofessional, but we were, we were very kind. You're always kind to actors when they're in there because they're really there with their bare face hanging out. You feel sorry for them in, in terms of there's somebody's going to be rejected. So this is probably the mo one of the most unprofessional auditions uh, that I've ever seen an actor go through. And she got the giggles. She couldn't get her lines out and everything. And she finally left, her, and, and the other woman she was reading with, and we looked at each other and said, Poor kid, she'll never go anywhere. It was Jamie Lee Curtis. <laughs> in, in Jamie Lee's defense, she was very, very young at the time. And, uh, I, I think she had something happen outside that got her into the giggles, and you know that could happen to any of us. But um, I also predicted the Waltons would be a bomb. So, you know. <laughs> uh, the the, uh, the final tag on the show, by the way, um, was that. Uh, uh, Adama has to uh, uh, break up both marriages, unseal them, was, was the term that we use. And uh, he's, he's beside himself, but he knows that he, he, he did bad, and so uh, everything is unsealed. And you see him go into like a phone booth, and he calls over to another ship, and you find out that he's married to a third woman. <laughs> um, uh, in fact, in the originals, we did an original story that before we got did, did the script that, uh, that dealt with space pirates, and it was still two for two, but it was, it was awful. Uh, the only thing that I, I liked uh, was, was the tag, which was different than the one that, that was in the script, which was uh, Twilly gets <coughs> banished to a planet where the women, uh, there are women there, and the, the two wives are going, that's the worst place you can possibly send them. And, he, and Adama says, no, he says, because on that planet they uh, practice polyandry, which means that the women can have more than one husband. So, uh, 